You just finished a long ride on a hot summer day. Engine's been running hard, exhaust headers are glowing, and you're ready to top off the tank before heading home. You pull into the gas station, kill the engine, and immediately reach for the fuel cap. That simple action, the one you've done hundreds of times, is slowly destroying your bike's fuel system. Here's the truth. This timing mistake costs riders thousands in repairs every year. We're talking fuel pump failures, clogged vapor systems, and engine damage that could have been prevented with a two minute wait. Today, I'm breaking down the physics of what happens inside your tank when it's hot, why 90% of riders get this wrong, and the simple cooling rule that protects your investment. The science behind the damage. Let's talk about what's really happening inside your fuel system when you've been riding hard. Your motorcycle's fuel tank isn't just a container. It's a pressurized system that's constantly managing vapor, temperature, and airflow. When your engine runs hot, everything connected to that fuel system heats up too. Here's how the pressure dynamics work. Gasoline starts vaporizing at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But when your tank gets hot from engine heat and summer sun, that vaporization rate skyrockets. Inside a heated fuel tank, you've got liquid gasoline at the bottom and an expanding cloud of fuel vapor at the top. This vapor creates pressure, sometimes significant pressure, that your fuel system has to manage. Your bike's vapor recovery system, also called the EVAP system, is designed to handle this pressure gradually. It uses a charcoal canister to absorb fuel vapors and a purge valve to release them back into the engine when conditions are right. But here's the critical part. This system is engineered for slow, steady vapor production, not sudden pressure releases. When you open that fuel cap on a hot tank, you're forcing all that built-up vapor pressure to escape at once. That sudden release doesn't just make that familiar hissing sound. It overwhelms your vapor recovery system. The charcoal canister gets flooded with liquid fuel instead of just vapor. And once that happens, it can't do its job properly. Now let's break down what fails first. Your fuel pump is the most vulnerable component. Modern fuel pumps rely on consistent pressure to operate efficiently. When the EVAP system gets clogged with liquid fuel, it can't vent the tank properly. This creates a vacuum effect as your engine consumes fuel, and that vacuum makes your fuel pump work harder to draw gasoline from the tank. The seals and gaskets throughout your fuel system take a beating too. They're designed to handle normal pressure variations, not the stress of repeated high pressure releases every time you fuel up. Over time, these seals start to leak, allowing fuel vapors to escape and moisture to get in. Here's where it gets expensive. A failing fuel pump doesn't just stop working one day, it degrades gradually. You'll notice reduced fuel economy first, then rough idling, maybe a check engine light. By the time you feel power loss or stalling, that pump is on its way out, and you're looking at a repair bill that can easily hit $1,000 or more. Motorcycle fuel systems are particularly vulnerable compared to cars because of size and heat exposure. Your bike's tank is smaller, so it heats up faster and more completely. It's also positioned closer to the engine and exhaust system, meaning it absorbs more radiant heat during operation. Car tanks are typically larger, positioned away from major heat sources, and have more sophisticated vapor management systems. Temperature thresholds matter here. Once your fuel system components hit around 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which happens easily on a hot day after spirited riding, the vapor pressure inside your tank can double or triple. At 160 degrees, you're in the danger zone where opening the cap immediately can cause fuel to actually spray out, not just release vapor. The real-world consequences stack up quickly. Reduced fuel economy means you're spending more at every fill-up. Check engine lights lead to diagnostic fees and potential emissions test failures. And when that fuel pump finally gives up, you're not just paying for the part. You're paying for labor to drop the tank, replace the pump, and test the entire fuel system. This isn't theoretical damage. It's measurable, progressive wear that shortens the life of expensive components. The irony is that this completely preventable problem is caused by something as simple as being impatient at the gas pump. The critical timing rule. Here's the rule that will save your fuel system. Wait a minimum of two minutes after shutting down your engine before opening that fuel cap. Not one minute, not 30 seconds, two full minutes. This isn't arbitrary timing. 
It's based on the physics of heat dissipation and pressure equalization in motorcycle fuel systems. Let me explain what happens during those critical two minutes. When you kill the engine, the cooling process begins immediately, but it's not uniform. Your exhaust headers will stay dangerously hot for 10 to 15 minutes, but the fuel tank and its components start cooling within the first 60 seconds. The key is giving the system time to reach thermal equilibrium. During the first minute, your fuel tank is still absorbing radiant heat from the engine cases and exhaust system. The fuel inside is still expanding, still creating vapor pressure. But around the 90 second mark, something important happens. The rate of heat absorption drops below the rate of heat dissipation. The tank finally starts cooling instead of heating up. The pressure equalization process is equally critical. Inside your heated tank, you've got high pressure fuel vapor pushing against the tank walls, the fuel cap, and trying to escape through every possible route. Your EVAP system is working to manage this pressure, but it needs time. The charcoal canister has to absorb vapor gradually, and the purge valve needs to cycle properly to prevent system overload. Here's what you need to watch for to know your bike is still too hot to fuel safely. First, listen to your exhaust system. If you can still hear ticking, clicking, or pinging sounds from the headers or exhaust pipes, they're still contracting from heat. That means your fuel system is likely still hot too. Touch test the area around your fuel tank, not the tank itself, but the frame or body panels near it. If they're uncomfortably warm to the touch, give it more time. You can also check the temperature of your engine cases. If they're too hot to keep your hand on for more than a few seconds, your fuel system needs more cooling time. The physics of fuel expansion and contraction in small motorcycle tanks makes this timing even more critical. Unlike car tanks that hold 15 to 20 gallons, your bike's tank probably holds three to six gallons. That smaller volume means temperature changes affect pressure more dramatically and more quickly. Think of it this way. In a large car tank, a 10 degree temperature increase might raise internal pressure by a few PSI. In your motorcycle's smaller tank, that same temperature change can double or triple the pressure. When you open the cap on a pressurized small tank, you get a much more violent release of vapor and potential fuel spray. Ambient temperature absolutely affects your waiting period. On a hot summer day when air temperatures hit 90 degrees or higher, extend that two minute rule to three minutes. The ambient heat slows down the cooling process and your fuel system needs extra time to reach safe pressure levels. In winter conditions, you might get away with 90 seconds. But here's the thing. Cold weather creates its own problems. Fuel contracts as it cools, which can create vacuum conditions in the tank. Opening the cap too quickly in cold weather can cause a sudden rush of air into the tank, potentially disturbing sediment or moisture that's settled at the bottom. Here's a quick field test you can use to know when it's safe to open your fuel cap. After your two minute wait, place your ear near the fuel cap without touching it. If you can hear any hissing, bubbling, or pressure sounds, wait another minute. A properly cooled and pressure equalized tank should be silent. You can also do a gentle pressure test. Place your hand lightly on the fuel cap without turning it. If you feel any upward pressure or resistance, that's trap vapor trying to escape. Give it more time. Another reliable indicator is your bike's cooling fan, if it has one. If the fan is still running after you've shut down the engine, your cooling system is still working to dissipate heat. Wait until that fan cycles off before attempting to fuel. The two minute rule isn't just about preventing damage. It's about developing the right habits that protect your investment long-term. The right way to fuel up. Now that you understand the science and timing, let's walk through the proper fueling sequence that protects your bike and keeps you safe. This isn't complicated, but getting each step right makes all the difference. Step one, engine shutdown. Don't just hit the kill switch, turn the key completely off. The kill switch only cuts spark, but leaves electrical systems powered. You want everything off to eliminate any potential ignition sources. Put the bike in gear if you're on a slope and make sure your kickstand is fully deployed on solid level ground. Here's where positioning matters. If you have a center stand, use it. The center stand keeps your bike perfectly vertical, which means you'll get an accurate fuel level reading and complete tank filling. If you're stuck with just a side stand, make sure you're on level ground. 
Fueling on an incline with the bike leaned over means one side of your tank won't fill properly and you'll end up with air pockets that can cause fuel starvation later. During your two minute cooling period, do a quick visual inspection. Check your fuel lines for any signs of cracking or wetness. Look at the area around your fuel cap for staining or discoloration that might indicate vapor leaks. This is also a good time to clean your visor, check your tire pressure, or just stretch your legs. When your cooling time is up, approach the fuel cap carefully. Touch a metal part of the bike away from the fuel filler to discharge any static electricity you built up. Static discharge near fuel vapors is extremely dangerous, and this simple touch eliminates that risk. Open the fuel cap slowly. Even after proper cooling, there might be slight pressure remaining. Turn the cap gradually and listen for any hissing sounds. If you hear pressure release, pause and let it equalize before removing the cap completely. Never force or rush this step. Here's the proper fueling technique. Insert the nozzle fully, but don't jam it in. Squeeze the handle gently, about half pressure compared to what you'd use on a car. Motorcycle tanks are small and can't handle the high flow rates that car pumps deliver. Fast filling creates turbulence, traps air, and can cause the automatic shutoff to trigger prematurely. Watch the fuel level rise steadily. When the pump clicks off, stop immediately. Don't try to top off or squeeze in extra fuel. That automatic shutoff is protecting your EVAP system from liquid fuel overflow. Attempting to add more fuel after the click will force gasoline into your vapor recovery system, causing the exact damage we've been discussing. Here's how to recognize vapor lock symptoms if you've been making these mistakes. Vapor lock happens when fuel vaporizes in your fuel lines before reaching the engine. You'll notice hard starting when the bike is hot, engine stumbling or cutting out during acceleration, and power loss on hot days. If you're experiencing these symptoms, your fueling habits might be contributing to the problem. Fuel selection works hand in hand with proper timing. Higher octane fuels have lower vapor pressure, which means they're less likely to vaporize in hot conditions. If you're riding in extreme heat or doing track days, Consider premium fuel not just for octane rating, but for its vapor pressure characteristics. During your cooling period, check for signs that your fuel system might already be damaged. A fuel cap that's difficult to remove might indicate pressure buildup from a clogged EVAP system. Fuel odors around your bike when parked could mean vapor leaks. A check engine light that comes on after fueling often points to EVAP system problems. Replace your fuel cap immediately if the gasket is cracked hardened, or doesn't seal properly. Use only OEM parts. Aftermarket caps might not maintain proper pressure seals. A $20 genuine fuel cap can prevent thousands in fuel system repairs. The two-minute cooling rule is your insurance policy against expensive fuel system damage. Those extra minutes at the pump protect your fuel pump, EVAP system, and engine from pressure damage that builds up over time. Remember, patience at the pump saves thousands in repairs. Wait two minutes after shutdown, fuel slowly, and stop when the pump clicks off. Subscribe for more maintenance tips that protect your investment and ride safe.